Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and sorry I haven't put too many uh, videos out this week. Kind of getting used to this day at home thing, and the office has really went through a downturn. So, uh, dealing with my excessive weight gain over the last couple weeks, I wanted to shift over from uh, information on COVID to information for beating the side effects from the infection. And it's also going to be the side effects from this country going through a really bad turmoil. So hopefully it doesn't get too bad. But if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the alert button to find out when I do new videos. Which, just as an announcement, I'm, a, I'm going to be doing aftermath videos to show you what I do in my basement. Basement exercise is so boring. But... <clears throat> With regards to this video and working on breath, um, I wanted to tailor it mostly for my post-COVID recovery patients that are still short of breath. You know, uh, those of you who are athletes, you probably don't have to watch this, uh, but those of you who are athletes are probably not sick. However, if in the case that you did come up with a positive COVID or just the symptoms, and at this point in time, there's, there's more places that are testing for COVID but no antibodies. So we, we know who is a positive. And if you couldn't get your test, but you were really sick and you contacted me and we went with the zithromycin or z or just observed, listen, if all the symptoms are done and you're still having difficulty with catching your breath, especially with exertion, oh, definitely when you're lying down or going to sleep, if there's a problem with that, you gotta call or go to the emergency room. If you don't have an issue with that, and it's just with exertion, going up and down the steps, going to exercise, doing some gardening and you're still like, wow, I'm winded, then listen to this. So um, there have been some studies, there are a lot of studies as far as acute mountain sickness. And um, here's one of them. I'm trying to, I'm not gonna flash too many of these because it seems to screw up my white balance, but that's one. Uh, let's just go in sequence. And then this one was a pretty decent one as far as pathophysiology. So you can look them up. There's a lot of information on acute mountain sickness uh, I like uh, reading on data and yeah, so I'm not gonna show you all these things, but um, read on acute mountain sickness. I mentioned it before my first breathe to fight video. And uh, when I uh, go up to high altitude, when anybody goes to high altitude and you're used to being a flatlander, high altitude will be 3000, uh, uh, 3000 meters or above, definitely 5000 meters then you're going to have less oxygen getting into every breath. Let's think of it that way. So yeah, here's my old uh, respirator. Believe it or not, this was for uh, back in the 70s. But when you take a breath in and then you exhale, take a breath in and exhale. Sometimes it, you can actually vent. This goes to a breathing tube. This is old school, old school. But you can actually just go like this and take shorter breaths or more of them or take a full breath take a full breath that's the same way that your lungs work <clears throat> there's a lot of volume in both sides those of you who are getting past this covid thing there's probably inflammation to the alveolar sacs or some of the lung tissue not only that i'm sure that the immune system's really beat up uh, the energy in each cell is probably drained you see my uh, video on nad uh, but if this is difficult now and you don't have any asthma and you don't have any COPD, then my suggestion would be we try to build up uh, muscle again, if, especially if you are coughing a lot and the muscles are exhausted from the COVID or just from average Joe athlete that wants to really get improved. So this is where I transition over to say, listen, if you are an average Joe, not an elite athlete, but an average Joe or Jane, the idea would be we want to maximize on the way the, the air filter works. The more oxygen you get in, basic uh, physiology, the more oxygen you get in or the deeper the breath, the bigger the lung space that you have efficiently used, the more the oxygen will transmit from the atmospheric air or the uh, inhaled uh, volume into the bloodstream. The once it's into the bloodstream, oxygen will bind to hemoglobin and then the hemoglobin will carry it to where it has to get to and it'll deposit it into the cell. Now the, uh, just FYI, if you were going through uh, COVID or you're going through COVID crisis now, sometimes when you're not that bad, there are, there is some, there is a basic premise of hyperbaric oxygen 
being used for COVID. Oh, there's that white balance thing. So um, sometimes not only having oxygen on the red blood cell in the hemoglobin bound to it so it can transport it and dump it off wherever it's needed, brain, heart, kidneys. If you have the, the, the entire six liters of blood, you know, the fluid, percolated with uh, oxygen, then the oxygen will do what it ever has to do to get past. You don't even need the hemoglobin. That's the concept of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And not only that, it's a cool uh, gizmo. It's a big chamber that you sit into, not that many available. Um, they use it more for Cassin's disease, the bends when you come up from uh, diving, uh, or I've seen it for uh, use in wound uh, improvement and carbon monoxide care. So. Regardless, I don't mean to come off too uh, or go too far away from the curve. The idea would be if we make your lung tissue larger because you're not used to breathing so deep. If we make your diaphragm stronger to pull down when you take a deep breath, if we make the intercostal muscles that sit between the ribs be able to relax and then contract and you know, relax and contract, you'll be able to use all of the volume that's in us. As I mentioned in the last video, a lot of us can just get by with using a little bit of lung tissue just up here and just taking some shallow breaths. So you won't notice it, especially if you're not doing anything, but you can do this and you get by. But if you try to hike with a backpack or run or work out with this, you'll hit the wall. You need to increase the volume of the entire lung space so that you'll be able to take in. Um, those of you who wear masks, this is a construction mask. Uh, this is what I propose to you now, spoiler alert. But those of you who wear construction mask, you'll find it's really restrictive. It's almost like exercising only through your nose. There have been some exercise tests or uh, studies done where athletes were told to exercise only breathing through the nose. And if you're not aware, try breathing through your nose. Don't open your mouth, maybe tape your mouth. But when you exercise only nose breathing, there's a lot of restriction and it's, it's difficult. You'll find yourself uh, air hungry. And when you're air hungry because you can't get in much volume like this versus it's a little bit different. It, again, if you're sitting down and you do a try it, it it's not going to be a noticeable difference. But you're out, if you're outside running and you're gasping for oxygen, uh, you're going to want to open mouth versus the nose because of the nose being restrictive, just like this. When I have to breathe through these filters, it restricts the flow. It's not as easy going in. Um, this is what some mixed martial artists used to do. I used to see them on the treadmill or on the bike, breathing through this. So I can breathe through this. But it, it increases, I can breathe through this, I said, but it increases the length of the tube and that's where the resistance comes in. I think it's called Bernoulli's Law, if I'm not mistaken. So. Sometimes if you want to slow down the amount of oxygen going in, you can, I don't know why you want to do that intentionally, but well, actually I do. Thus, the reasons why my next study will come up. Uh, if you slow down the oxygen coming in, you'll have a relative hypoxemic event or you'll cause hypoxia. Hypoxia is what a lot of people uh, go through. I, I submit to you that hypoxia is what a lot of people go through right in, in COVID, right before the cytokine storm. So check out my video on cytokine storm and when uh, uh, the tissues of the lung, when the brain, when the carotid bodies, when the heart senses low oxygen coming in, it'll turn on fight or flight response. So fight or flight response will turn on fast heart rate. Uh, it'll make you kind of, uh, it'll make you burn more carbohydrate than fat. Interesting, uh, but it'll also help with getting you ready for the next time. That's called uh, a hormesis. When an animal or a living being is given a stressor, the living being tolerates the stressor if it's not overwhelming, and then it tries to accommodate for the stressor to be bulletproof the next time. Kind of like exercise uh, building muscle. When you, you don't just build muscle for show. Uh, well, I guess some people do, but you want to build muscles that you're stronger the next time. If I have to carry somebody uh, off of a trail, I want my traps ready. Not that I exercise for that. Hopefully it never happens. But uh, so when and there ever there's an allostatic load placed on something, it 
uh, rises to meet the allostatic load and then becomes better than the stressor, if that makes sense. So in this case, when you give a little bit of hypoxia, meaning yeah, you read through this or you wear this for a long time, which I think a lot of patients are getting used to, especially the construction mask ones, you will be able to force the body to not turn on its stress response, its sympathetic response so quick. And that's where the beauty of being at high altitude as far as training, this is for my uh, Joe and Jane athletes coming up. If you train at high altitude, like New Mexico, Colorado, Boulder is awesome. A couple other places that are high altitude, that's like uh, 6,000 uh, 6, to 7,000 feet. You'll find yourself gasping and grabbing your shorts because you just can't train like you did at low, land, low altitude. So when you do improve after about two weeks, the red blood cell amount, the tolerance to decreased oxygen, the brain, uh, turning off the brain stress response, because that'll do it too. If you feel like you're short of breath, like everybody going through the news or hearing the news of COVID and suddenly you, you start to notice you're coughing, short of breath, turns on the stress response. And even if you don't have the infection, you're going to start worrying, am I going to die? Because everybody thinks about that. So this is where the training will come in handy. And I do have a couple of so again, the end result or the end, um, end game for my discussion today is you can actually improve the way you tolerate exercise by wearing or working on resistance. This is a, these are a couple of studies I came up with on using a mask. So there's that. So I have a couple others, but this is a mask. So it's almost, it, this, I, hopefully you can hear me. This is almost like the rebreather for uh, decreasing uh, intake of particles down to 1.1 1 .1 microns, I think. That's tiny. But because the filter is so going to filter out tiny particles, it'll also be hard to get much volume in. That's the reason why these filters are huge. Now, if, we're, if and when we get over this COVID thing, uh, one thing that you can try is an elevation mask. Now they call this elevation, but actually it's just restrictive breathing. Uh, if you're on a budget, you can always get this. It kind of looks goofy if you're training with a snorkel. But again, I see my MMA guys do it. So I'm gonna put this on and show you how it looks. So this is my mask. So air comes in here, depending on how. All right, better take it off. Air comes in here, depending on, and you can change the restrictions. This is just one hole, but there's other ones with four holes, two holes, and then the one hole. This is the tight, tightest one. Supposedly, breathing through one tiny hole with the restriction is equal to 9,000, training at 9,000 feet. I, I, I don't see that correlation and the studies are really wishy-washy, but the concept is cool and the downside is low. So you can change these out depending on uh, where you are with your fitness level. If you just try, and then this is where you uh, breathe out. So the valves go, let you breathe out this way. So there's no restriction relative and then breathe in this way where there is restriction. So it makes you feel like you're breathing through this thing. So uh, when you do use this and you do activities of daily living, this will be hard. You'll, you'll feel a little bit claustrophobic, just like you guys wearing masks, N95 masks for the first time, or you uh, construction guys putting on the, the high filtration masks, especially when you're exposed to sawdust and a couple other particles um, of paint, especially. So you, you, at first you feel short of breath when you wear these things, when you wear this thing, when you're, in, uh, when you're snorkeling, you, you will feel short of breath, but after a while you get used to it. Now, if you're just snorkeling, you're just floating, and that's not really asking for demand. But when you're lifting stuff and building and carrying and walking, you will get short of breath when you first try this. You'll get short of breath when you first put this on. But that's the objective. And going back to what I mentioned before, if you place an allostatic load on the body, a stressor, like difficulty with breathing, not getting, not getting enough air, with this, because it restricts the flow, uh, the body will first say, hey, there's no oxygen, and you'll have a fast heart rate, you'll probably get uh, a little anxious, and you'll try to breathe heavy. Uh, physiologically, you'll see the blood volume contract. This is what usually happens at altitude. Blood volume contracts, uh, the stroke volume, if you want to hear about the weeds, 
your stroke volume uh, decreases and your heart rate has to increase to maintain blood flow to the heart. Uh, also, th that again, the allostatic load of decreased oxygen, and maybe it happens with COVID too, but decreased oxygen will sense to the brain, hey, we're going to die soon. So the brain will also say, okay, uh, mobilize all the energy. And that's why you switch from fat burning, if you're a keto person, to all glucose. And that's why, because of the glucose uh, burning, you'll also have lactic acid build up. And then those of you who run, when you have lactic acid, you hate, or especially runners hate lactic acid because it makes your, uh, or your bodybuilders. You probably like lactic acid because it gives you the fullness, but uh, runners hate it because it makes their legs feel like concrete. Until you pass that initial stage of allostatic load, which is usually two weeks in, on a mountaintop, and suddenly the blood volume increases. Erythropoietin or EPO is released from the kidney because the brain thought, whew, that, that stressor contracted all my blood uh, uh, volume. So let's get more blood. So the kidneys get signaled to make more red blood cells. And that is why a lot of athletes will train at high altitude. It used to be called uh, blood doping. They'd take blood out there, go back down to Olympic level, and then they'd put the blood back in, which would be excessive amounts of red blood cells, which would cause a stroke and heart attack. Not good, and that's illegal. So, um, so now it's acceptable to go train up, go down, and within about, I think, a month of the competition, and you'll still have those red blood cells with you. And, then, and if you take all that and then you go down to a flatland, you'll eventually, the kidney will say, well, we don't need the red blood cells anymore, so the EPO will decrease. And you're, but again, even if you live flatland, going up every once in a while to train will be helpful to get you comfortable. Because the other part of having that shortness of breath when you first get to altitude or having the shortness of breath when you first get exposed to COVID, again, the mind will start running and anxiety will fuel more heart rate, will fuel more uh, uh, stress response. And when that happens, uh, you'll breathe faster, your heart rate will go faster. And when that happens, increased temperature, bingo, you'll have a fever. And then what? You're gonna think, really, you're gonna die of COVID. Or, or if you're an athlete, you, you're not gonna like that, especially when you're just walking around, just sitting there watching TV or Netflix, like we all are. Your heart rate rat attacking, your heart rate's going super fast. It's like, what's going on with me? And then your heart rate's gonna say, pay attention to me. And if you have anxiety, it's gonna really cycle up. So those of you who don't have anxiety, cool. Those of you who are recovering from COVID, again, I would try to do what I just mentioned. And if you can't, get one of these masks, which I got this on uh, Amazon. No, no, Dick's, Dick's Sporting Goods. I tried Amazon, but it was impossible to get. So I, I ordered it through Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, they have curbside, so you can pick it up. A little pricey. Um, but uh, if you just came from a hospital, thank you to uh, Ray and Marizel. They got me this thing. Uh, it's clean. So, uh, but this is what you get in a hospital. So, uh, when you have surgery, I want you to see the markings here. When you have surgery, when you're um, coming off of a vent, they want you to do this thing. It's called incentive spirometry. So, uh, again, the tube is perfectly sized in length. And then there's this little, if you can't see it, there's happy, fa there's sad face, happy face, and mediocre face. And then there's mark. There's a marker here, and then the uh, the thought of volume of what you're inhaling. So what you do is... You want to keep this ball to a happy face, which is right in the middle. You don't want to do a fast inhale. I mean, it's kind of cool to see what your marker is. Uh, as I showed you with my last video, I have a pretty decent uh, forced expiratory, uh, uh, one second of forced expiratory volume, uh, getting up to the 800s. But uh, if you want to improve lung volume, diaphragmatic movement, intercostal uh, uh, cooperation with the movement of the volume here and the trapezius muscles. It, it, all these things have to be taken into account and coordinated. And when you don't exercise, you probably don't have the taste of that coordination. This will help. This is an incentive spirometer. So this is how you do it. You want to keep the ball right to midline. You don't want to just drive it all the way up, although there's benefits to that. But, uh, and I'll talk about that maybe in the future, but uh, just to midline. So like this, slow and steady. Out. Oh, I just messed that up. Okay. Out. Oh, see, that, that's tough. Let's try it again. Out. Oh. 
Uh, one more time. Uh, I, I didn't see it. I think I went to 3,000 if I... No, I'll, I'll rewind it. But that will get you a little dizzy. You're supposed to do it 10 times uh, every hour, and it builds up your lung volume. It makes you comfortable with that little bit of dizziness feeling, the tachycardia. You probably won't give, develop it just doing 10 uh, repetitions. But those of you who are really wasted, like being on a ventilator for so long you're, you're, and, and being turned, like in New York, awesome work in New York, by the way, uh, being turned every hour with a whole team, those guys are fantastic. I, I heard the surgeons that aren't doing surgery are coming over with the anesthesiology guys and turning every patient over just to make sure that they breathe better and don't have any uh, skin breakdown in New York. They, we're, thank God it's not that he heavy here yet but it's probably coming. So if you're totally wasted, uh, atrophic, physically deconditioned, it's going to be tough to take a deep breath, and this will help you. I think you can get this online. <sighs> I, I still didn't see where I went to. So that is an incentive spirometer. Pretty cool thing. If you can't do that, then you can try to do it this way. Nah, it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, and then, uh, again, if you have one of these peak flows, uh, if you're an asthmatic, you know what that is, but you can measure your strength and power after you do, uh, I don't know, about two, four weeks of this. So it, it's not really a like a bodybuilding exercise, but it will get you conditioned to using your, your volume, the maximum volume as best as possible. So those of you who are short of breath, I think that this, in addition to eucalyptus in the area, I think this will improve the function that you will be calm when you're a little short of breath. It will also improve your tolerance to uh, de slightly decreased oxygenation. And even if you have an ox uh, pulse ox and you're 93 or above, I'd still say you, you would benefit from this. Why? Well, again, taking this to the next step as far as athletes. This will help you uh, work on lung volume, intercostal muscle strength, trapezius muscles, coordinating with the diaphragm. So all these things that uh, are involved with taking a deep breath, we take for granted. But uh, like in Tai Chi, I'm going to be filming with the Tai Chi master later today. Like Tai Chi, the idea is to work with breath. It's yoga. It's not just the pose, just as important as the breath. And when you have great lung, lung volume and great coordination of lung tissue, and a calm to a brain, then you'll, you, I think you'll be bulletproof to the trials that we're all going through. Or if you're an athlete without COVID, you'll be bulletproof to when you do ascend to the next level of altitude or when you push a little harder as far as HIIT training or going from regular exercises to HIIT training. So uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how to use an incentive spirometer. The, the argument of maybe putting on a mask while you're in training. So this is what I am going to do now is while I'm training in the basement, which is really boring, I'll give myself a little bit of an allostatic load by exercising with this. And just using it with doing stuff around the house is really restrictive. Again, like my nurses and doctors and uh, maintenance folks in the and utility clean uh, in the hospital. Thank God you guys at phlebotomists, everybody's doing such a good job, even the front desk. So just stay protected. Um, so hope uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next tutorial.